Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining me today. I'm Jenna Stauffer. Now, one word that I think we'd all like to completely erase and never hear again is cancer. It's powerful, it's alive, and it can change a life in an instant. Now, we've all heard the statistics. Each year, more than 12,000 Floridians are diagnosed with breast cancer. Nearly 3,000 die from it. However, many women do win their fight against breast cancer. In fact, more women today than ever before. Now, these women represent hope, the very hope of winning the fight against breast cancer, and I feel that they are every woman's inspiration. To demonstrate just how personal the fight against breast cancer is, my first guest this morning, she's going to start the show off by sharing her story with us. Suzanne, thank Hi. you for Hi, being Jen. on the show with thank me. Thank you for having me. All right, Suzanne, so you were diagnosed in December of 2007. Tell me about when you found out. Um, well, I found out it was really by accident. Um, I was uh, going to another doctor for um, um, a different diagnosis up in Miami, and she suggested that I have an early mammogram even at 37 and I didn't have any history of breast cancer, it was something that she thought I should do for my record. So um, I went and had a mammogram and um, obviously it turned out to be a regular, followed by the ultrasound and uh, it was still, they could still not diagnose it at that time. So they suggested that I have um, a biopsy and um, so I did on December 10th, we got the results and they said I had um, the stage one breast cancer on the left side mm -hmm. and they rec recommended I have a mastectomy. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately we couldn't do what a lot of women get is a lumpectomy because I had it in several different areas of the left side. Mm -hmm. So um, we looked at various different doctors and had several opinions. Um, mm -hmm. We found a fabulous surgeon in Miami, um, Dr. Derek Opian, mm -hmm. and um, a lot of people in Key West had met him and had recommended him, mm -hmm. and he was um, he was really very very great. And we um, uh, he recommended that uh, I try to do some plastic surgery at the same time as doing um, the surgery, having a mastectomy. So then I met this uh, second doctor who was um, a plastic surgeon in Miami, mm -hmm. Dr. Deirdre Marshall, and she was actually Irish, and she she was um, a really big influence on me because. The type of cancer that I have, uh, it tends to reoccur, um, and so she had told me that if I didn't have both done, that I would be back in her office within 10 years trying to get the other side done. And it was so traumatic to do it the first time around that mm -hmm. I decided I never wanted to have to deal with it again, so mm -hmm. um, I decided to have a double mastectomy. Mm -hmm. So uh, January 2008, I had a double mastectomy. Um, Unfortunately, after about a week and a half after my surgery, this, the surgeon called and said they found a tumor in the post-op biopsy, um, which uh, had the genetic makeup that was quite aggressive, mm -hmm. and so then recommended six months of chemotherapy followed by 18 months of a drug called Herceptin. So that was, it took about 18 months for the full treatment, mm -hmm. um, and yes, it was a difficult time, but mm -hmm. my son was only two years old at the time, so um, it was difficult for all of us in the mm -hmm. family to do it. How did it change your outlook on just life in general, Suzanne? Um, I remember one specific instance when I was lying in bed. The chemo used to make me feel very sick and tired for a couple of days afterwards. And um, I, my brother came to visit me from Ireland, and my house was a constant barrage of visitors. Mm -hmm. um, I was very lucky. We had a lot of friends that, that um, helped and supported especially with my son. Mm -hmm. But one particular day I was feeling really bad and I was um, lying in bed and I remember hearing everybody outside in the patio laughing and having fun and generally just living a regular Sunday afternoon and mm -hmm. meanwhile I couldn't lift my head off the pillow. So I remember thinking then, I was like, should I ever get back to full health and I would go back to work and mm -hmm. um, do something, you know, independent just for me and um, I think Every night when I go to bed, I, I'm grateful for the day that I just had. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, sometimes when you have to take a step back and look and you're not able to do day-to-day -day things, then mm -hmm. you do get, if you get the second chance, then you do certainly appreciate things a little bit more. Mm -hmm. You realize just how blessed you yeah, truly are. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now, did you reach out to the American Cancer Society for help, Suzanne? 
the the year I did the chemo after I finished the chemo relay for life was on that year and I did go I used to participate in relay for life um, prior to ever having cancer and um, I went through chemo with two other people and uh, I, I did go there but I wasn't able to um, it didn't really motivate me unfortunately because it just made me feel um, more closer to the cancer and I was mm -hmm. trying to disconnect myself from it so it took me a few years and then uh, last year was the first year I got involved in the Making Strides in the 5k walk. Mm -hmm. So last year was the first year and you are going to be involved again this year Suzanne? Yes we have a team called the Treasure Chest team this year um, our goal is to raise $10,000 mm -hmm. last year we raised about 7000 so we've upped it to $10,000 this year and uh, we're well underway. We have about $3,600 raised so far. Okay, and this is going to be taking place here already next weekend, right? Yes, October 13th at Higgs Beach. Mm -hmm. um, and there are several fundraisers going around town. This Friday night, in fact, at Finnegan's Wake, we're having our pink party. Mm -hmm. um, and I have an Irish band, and I'm singing there for that. And that's at um, happy hour from 5 to 8. And uh, we have a huge raffle, lots of great prizes. And then Blue, which is a boutique in town on Caroline Street, is doing an ongoing uh, fundraiser for us. Um, they have a beautiful tribute wall, which is um, where you can buy a paper bra and mm -hmm. de designate it to whoever you'd like to designate it to, and it's put up on the wall for display. So all mm -hmm. of those proceeds are going towards the cause. That's wonderful. And for more information, our viewers can check out the website, which is located on the bottom of the screen. And the fight to end breast cancer can start with a single step that can be taken at this Making Strides Walk. Suzanne, thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank this you for morning. having me. I'm going to take a quick break, but I'll be right back after these messages. Please stay with me.